Hello and welcome to this edition of Convenience Talks. I'm Katie Moses, founder and MD of Cam Media. Um, and today I am welcoming the wonderful Tanya Pepin, who is co-founder of TWC. Tanya, thank you for joining me today. Um, for anybody that doesn't know who TWC are, who possibly haven't worked with you previously, do you want to just give us a quick rundown of who you are and, and, and the amazing work that you do in the wholesale industry? Hi, Katie, and thanks for asking me to do this. So, yeah, uh, TWC, so we specialise in wholesale shipments data. That's uh, the core part of our business. So we manage data on behalf of a growing selection of clients. So Unitas, Country Range, Parfits, um, amongst others. We've recently added um, Comfex, uh, CJ Lang uh, to our portfolio, and also Caterforce. So particularly the hardest to reach parts of our industry, actually, independent wholesalers. Mm. Um, we provide that data on dashboards to suppliers who want to purchase the data from their wholesalers. In addition to that, we also do insight consultancy. Uh, so we'll deep dive on data. Um, uh, on behalf of wholesalers but also more commonly for suppliers so a long-term client of ours is boost drinks and we support them with their route to market data mining uh, for all wholesale data right let's talk lockdowns shall we and we've now got lockdowns to choose from we're sport for choice with lockdowns what happened uh, you know i don't want to dwell too long uh, here in the in, in the distant past but what happened to TWC and to wholesale data in general um, in lockdown number one? So I guess for us, um, it was a very, very busy time. Um, we found that wholesalers and suppliers were clamoring for shipments data. Obviously the supply chain was thrown into disarray. Um, standard forecast models just weren't working. Things that were normally um, fine from a forecasting perspective like flour were completely out of stock. Uh, and things that were generally high volume lines like impulse and uh, licensed um, had a complete change also in buying patterns so shipments became ever more uh, important so on the wholesaler side we were extremely busy facilitating the release of data so people could buy more yeah. accurately if there was such a thing at that time on the supplier side obviously it was highly disruptive time again um, this challenge of a complete break in forecasting models and also trying to understand what the short-term implications were that would lead to the long-term year-end financial positions mm -hmm. so doing lots of data on demand for our supplier clients so that they could get a view of what was happening in the market Fantastic. So, so you became even more important to your clients throughout that time then. And, and how did that, did, did that continue through the sort of the first reopening that we had back in July where the, the shops and, and pubs and bars and restaurants still started to reopen again? I mean, it was the importance of data. Was it, was it still as high as it was during lockdown? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, I guess, indicative that we have announced new contracts with new wholesalers since the end of lockdown one and before the start of lockdown two. So I think that says an awful lot, actually, about the current priority in terms of data. Um, we did stay busy. Um, I think it's fair to say that in both sectors, it wasn't like everything reopened and everything just went back to how it was before. Everything was still very volatile. Nobody really knew what was happening. So actually getting visibility on the route to market was more important than ever. And again, I guess people were also unsure whether we were going to end up in a second lockdown, although I think the consensus was it was fairly inevitable, um, sadly. So therefore there was planning to do around that as well. So yeah, things haven't stopped for us, um, you know, July, onwards we've been as busy as ever mm, and so we're, we're now in that as you say inevitable second lockdown and, and, and I've got to say that you know without wanting to to be um, negative I do think there will be more lockdowns to come possibly will be you know let out for Christmas and then there will be looking at possibly more you know and whether it's staggered and staged lockdowns or whatever it looks like or tiered lockdowns I do think that that's to come what lessons have we learnt from lockdown one and reopening one that we've managed to take into lockdown two and soon to come reopening two when it comes to wholesale, when it comes to data? 
I mean, it's early days at the moment to be looking at shipments out following sort of lockdown to beginning because we're only about a week into it. So that is, it's early days. My sense at the moment is that um, wholesalers um, bought bigger on the lines, obviously, that, you know, were challenging last time. Mm -hmm. Suppliers also, I'm sure it's fair to say, have been better prepared as well. I mean, everybody was in a position back in March that, you know, it was unprecedented, whereas at least this time there was some foresight. Well, yeah. um, we won't throw Brexit into the mix on this one yeah. either, but, but we could add that in in terms of um, further market volatility. So I think um, the, the forecasting buying piece is, is smoother this time. Um, I think there are challenges though this time personally. I think that um, people are tired um, and I think, you know, that there is a whole jaded piece around trying to maintain momentum through what is normally a busy period anyway. Now it's going to be a busy period plus lockdown plus potentially a Brexit. I mean, that's a lot to put on people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there is a piece... Um, I think you've seen it, but we've recently done some consumer research uh, around planning for Christmas and the role of convenience within Christmas 2020. And I think there are a few things on that. I think there is a piece around, you know, consumers are shopping for Christmas now because they don't know when they can get out. So, you know, and are retailers ready for that? And have we got the right range for that consumer need? Mm -hmm. um, whilst it's true that convenience is still very much about top up, um, and emergency shopping you know consumers need to shop more locally so they will be looking for gifting ideas and christmas treats etc and and are retailers ready for that so i think that's the first thing and, and are we seeing evidence that consumers are stocking up on christmas now rather than doing sort of one big christmas food shop are they starting to, to, to sort of shop in, in piecemeal so to speak yeah, so 38% of respondents to our survey said that they were already looking for gifts, 19% um, were already buying food, and 16% were already buying licensed products. So yes, um, I think anecdotally, I was watching the news just before lockdown hit, and um, my local larger shopping centre is Milton Keynes, and there were um, you know people there being filmed to camera doing pieces around, well, we're getting it in now because we don't know when we're going to get out again. And you know i think that's the thing people are shopping differently this year potentially there is not only the issue of not being able to get out but there's also the issue that people are more strapped for cash this year um so you know actually if they see a deal and they can buy it why wouldn't they absolutely and so looking to the future then you know what support does wholesale need and where does data slot into into that you know coming out of this second lockdown and possibly a third or fourth or you know wherever we end up you know what what does wholesale need with regards to data to help smooth that future path so to speak so i think it's twofold um katie i think um one of my hobby horses about is about industry data um i think you know if i was being slightly controversial um the wholesale okay. sector <laughs> the wholesale sector has always slightly been seen as the wild west um it's not helped itself in that view by the fact that data has been hard to come by historically um i think it's been challenging for industry bodies to um advocate on behalf of this channel because of the lack of composite data this channel has to evidence its scale and scope. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I guess I, I can say this to you because you've been in the thick of it. I watch Kate Nichols from UK Hospitality standing up with her facts and her stats about, you know, uh, co uh, contribution to GDP and the number of people <laughs> employed. Yeah. And Wholesale needs all of that because that is the only way that stakeholders and public sector institutions understand and we have struggled with that mm -hmm. and the only way we're going to get that is with market data um, and so that does require some form of market read so that we can put together what the total route to markets turnover is what its contribution is how many people it employs that kind of thing so that's really important and then I think secondly there is a piece around it's great that more wholesalers are now starting to 
release data. I'm delighted they've chosen to do it through us. That's fabulous. Um, but it is about that relationship between supplier and wholesaler where it becomes uh, a, a two-way data sharing process so yeah. that they are using it for planning and business development on an ongoing basis, not just when there's a crisis, but in every meeting. And that way then you will get efficiency um, of throughput of product. Um, we're never going to get to just in time and to some extent COVID has proved that just in time has its own issues. But yeah. we could be a lot more efficient um, if data sharing was enabled more. Absolutely, I totally agree. And I think that we're going to see over the next few months just how important that data sharing is and just how important knowledge, information um, and collaboration as well. You know, I've been, I've been so, you know, it's been a joyous thing to watch companies work together throughout the last six months to make sure that they can, you know, get product to stores so that stores can get product to consumers so that other consumers can help more vulnerable consumers, you know. And I think that collaboration piece is, is incredibly important. Do you think that we're going to see more collaboration within wholesale convenience and with suppliers and retailers? Do you think that we're going to see that coming out of lockdown too? I hope so. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, Mike, my co-founder, um, used to talk about teams always work when they've got a common enemy. Um, and I think COVID has been that common enemy that's actually brought the channel together um, because the greater good has been working with each other. And it's bizarre because actually we are an industry that gets on very well. We talk about how it's an industry built on relationships. Mm. And yes, I would hope that in the effort to um, uh, affirm our place within the, the overall route to market, uh, alongside the malts, alongside bigger operators of other types, that yes, the industry will see the greater good of sharing information and continuing to be collaborative because it helps them all. Absolutely. Fantastic. And on that wonderfully positive note, Tanya, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you joining me for this episode of Convenience Talks.